No BS TS is back with series two. It's an all new series. In series one, we cover the basics of TypeScript. And in series two, we are going to look at every single design pattern in the original Gang of Four design patterns book. And why? Because I get asked about design patterns a lot. And there's a really good reason for that. Data structures, algorithms, and design patterns are the three fundamental things that you need to know that are absolutely perennial. Languages come and go, frameworks come and go, but design patterns stay relatively the same. Now we're gonna take a look at all of those design patterns in that book and more, and because it's TypeScript, we are gonna do both the object-oriented version of them as well as the functional programming version of them. So it's really cool. I think you're gonna be really excited by this series. I certainly am. But before we get into it, I am super excited to announce the release of No BS TS, the book. For $34.99, you can have the book that accompanies the series. It's over 200 pages, and I've covered every single episode and more, including this episode. In fact, every single time a new No BS TS video comes out, it's gonna have a corresponding chapter in the book, and you are going to get an update. It's really exciting stuff. It's basically a subscription to the series. I'm super excited about it. Not only does it have all of the code and the descriptions, of everything that's been in the series, but it also has behind the scenes stuff, how to do these videos. It's just really a fun book and a fun read. I think it is. Of course, the link to where you can buy the book is in the description down below. So what are we covering in this week's video? We're covering three different design patterns. All of these are factories, the abstract factory pattern, the builder pattern, and the factory method pattern. And they're all meant to loosen the coupling between the code that decides whether an object should be created from the code that actually does the object creation, which makes your code that much more reusable. And reusability is an important key factor to almost all of the design patterns. So let's jump right into the abstract factory pattern. Okay, so our example of an abstract factory pattern is a logger. So in this case, we have our client, which could be an app or anything like that. We have a factory called the logger factory that we then call a method on, and it will decide for us whether we're in production mode or development mode to give us the either production logger or the development logger. Pretty simple stuff, but it does allow you to loosen that coupling between the client code and the logger code. So you don't have to put that logic of whether you're in development mode or in production mode all over your code base, you just call the logger factory and it gives you the appropriate one. Okay, so this is our project. We have our three directories here, one for the abstract factory, one for the builder, and one for the factory method. So let's go into the abstract factory and we're first going to initialize our project. And then I'm gonna add TypeScript and TS node. And then after that, I'm just going to initialize TypeScript so I'm gonna get rid of the terminal and then I'm gonna go create a factory class TS file. And I'm gonna specify an interface for the logger. Now that's gonna have all the basic logging methods. So info warn debug. And we also want error. And I'm gonna implement this in two different ways. I'm gonna implement a production logger, which implements iLogger. And what I'll do in this case is just copy and paste all these and then put in stubs. And for production logger, all you really want are the warnings and error. So in this case, I'll do console.warn and then give the message and then also console.error. But our development logger is gonna do all of them. Okay, so now we've got our basic loggers down. Now we need to go and create the factory. So let's create a new class called logger factory. And then I'm gonna use the GitHub Copilot code as a good starting point for this. But in this case, I don't wanna pass in the environment. I want that to come from the environment variable. So I'm going to say process dot env and then node env. And so if we're in production mode, then we return the production logger. Otherwise, we 
return the development logger. So I'm getting some grief here from TypeScript that it doesn't know what process is. So let me go back over to the terminal and add the types for node in development mode. And the last thing I need to do is just export this. So let's go try it out. I'm gonna go create a factory class test.ts. And from there, we're going to import the logger factory from factory class. And I will use it to create a logger. And then I'll do some login. Let's see, debug. Let's just say that's a debug message. And then warn. info and error. Now, if we go back to the implementation, we can see that the default here is that we want the development logger. So we should expect that when we run this, we're just gonna get all of those messages. So let's try that out and see. And yeah, we get all of them. And now if we change the environment, so we say node env equals production, what do we get? We just get the warning and the error. It's just like that. But here's a great thing though, from this factory class test perspective, I don't have to worry about any of that. I just get the logger and then it does gives me back the appropriate one based on the environment. Easy peasy. So I mentioned at the start of this, I'm gonna give you the functional variant as well as the object-oriented variant of each one of these. So let's go build the function variant of our factory class. I'm gonna go copy all of this and create a new file called factory functions.ts. The interface remains the same for sure. And this one, the production logger just becomes a function that returns an I logger. And there you go. And in here we have the development logger. Again, it's a function that returns an I logger. Looking good so far. And then we'll rebuild logger factory as a function called create logger. And all we need to do is just call production logger or development logger. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's uh, now go and use it. So I'll copy this and we'll call this factory functions test.ts. And so we'll change the import to be factory functions. And this would be create logger. And that's it, so let's try it again with our factory functions. I'm gonna do npx ts node, and then factory functions test. And again, we expect that all four come out, and they indeed do. So let's try it again with node n equals production. And we just get the warn and error messages. How cool is that? So exactly the same pattern implemented both in OOP and also in functional style. Okay, so the next one we're gonna take a look at is the builder pattern. And I'm gonna use a different scenario for this. We are going to scrape a directory full of files and we're gonna see if the file is a JSON file, then we'll parse it using JSON. And if it's a text file, then we'll just bring it in as a piece of text. So with the builder pattern, the app first creates an object that has some methods on it. And so then in this case, that's gonna be like, is a JSON file, parse JSON file and parse text file. And then it gives that to the generic scraper as the implementation of its guts, essentially. So the directory scraper, its job is to just go and scrape through that directory. But then when it comes to actually creating the objects from those files, it gives that responsibility over to the methods that are in that builder. So it makes that directory scraper that much more generic. And in fact, maybe even the scraper methods 
are also generic and they can be used in other contexts. So, and again, a very nice pattern. So let's go build it. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is close up a bunch of these and we're gonna take a look at our builder directory which has already the TypeScript set up. And I'm gonna go in there and create a new folder called data. And that's gonna have in it two files. It's gonna have a JSON file, .json, say, you know, some value is true, really doesn't matter. And then we're gonna have a text file. Let's say Avengers is cool. Okay, so now we've got our data and I'm gonna go create a new file called dir scraper class. TS, and in there I'm going to create an interface for file reader. And its job is to say, are you a JSON file? And given a file, it's going to say yes or no. And in the case of a text file, I'm going to say read text, give it the file name, and it's going to return a string. And then it's also going to have a read JSON which just returns really unknown. We don't know what's in the JSON, that's fine. So now we're gonna create our directory scraper and it's gonna use one of these file readers to process the files that it finds. It's gonna have a constructor that takes a path. And then it's gonna have that reader, which is a type of I file reader. And then it's gonna have a scan files function that scans through all those files. So we'll start off by returning fs read dir sync, actually, yeah, thank you, GitHub Copilot, that's awesome. And then we're gonna reduce. And the output of this reducer is going to be a record. It goes from a string to an unknown. And we're gonna start off with that file and also an empty object. At this point, we wanna say, is this a JSON file or not? So we're gonna call that file reader, and we're gonna say, are you a JSON file? And if we are, then we are going to call that file reader read JSON. And if not, then we're gonna do the read text file. And at the end, we are going to return the new accumulator. Now we need to import fs, All right, so because TypeScript is set a little strict, I'm gonna go and copy this as the type for the accumulator and also say that the file is a type of string. And then the one last thing I need to do is make sure that I get the pathing right. So add on here the dir path and then also the file name. Okay, cool. So let's go and implement our file reader. And then in read text, I'm going to read the file as text. And in read JSON, take that same file and basically just do exactly the same thing except run it through json.parse. All right, so we've implemented now our file reader. And now we wanna essentially merge these two things together. So we wanna create a file reader and we also wanna create a directory scraper. We wanna give it the directory where the data is, and we also wanna give it the file reader that we just created. And then we wanna get the output of that from the scan files, and then see what it looks like in the console. I'm gonna run TS node on that file, and we can see that we had a JSON file that gives us some value is true, and a text file that has Avengers is cool. So here's the really cool part about this. Directory scraper is now loosely coupled to the file reader. And we can reuse both of these things. If we had a different type of parsing that we wanted to do on these files, this directory scraper could be used to implement that. And if we wanted to, we could also reuse the file reader in a different context to actually go and read different types of files. It's actually really nice and loosely coupled between these two things. Okay, so let's go build a functional version of this. I'm now gonna go and create a new file called dir scraper functions. Ts. 
I'll keep the interface the same. And then I'll start by making a directory scraper function here that's going to take the dir path and the file reader. And that's really just going to be scan files. And there's no this, so we just got to get rid of a bunch of that. And there's no public, so let's get rid of that. All right, looking pretty good. So now let's implement the file reader. So we'll call this file reader. And it's of a type iFile reader. And we'll just add some commas. But of course, I got rid of the file reader that we had down here. And we're just going to call directory scraper and give it our arguments, file reader and data. OK, let's give it a go. Nice. And of course, all of this code is available to you in GitHub and you can keep trying it out for yourself. All right, let's try one more design pattern to loosely couple, in this case, our directory scraper. So we're going to use exactly the same example in both the builder and also the factory method. So in the factory method pattern, the app is going to instantiate directory scraper, which is going to descend from the abstract directory scraper. And that abstract directory scraper is going to have the logic of iterating through the directory. And then the directory scraper is going to have the concrete methods for is JSON, parse text, and parse JSON. And the great thing about this particular pattern is in this case, the app doesn't need to know that these two things are disconnected. It can just directly instantiate directory scraper and get the implementation that it wants. All right, let me close out a few files here. And I'm just going to copy the data in the factory method, because it'd be the same data in both cases. Now, because these two are so closely related, I'm actually going to copy the implementation from here into Dura Scraper class within factory method. And then I'll go into the factory method directory. And here I'm going to add types node. That gives us access to that FS. And I'm going to take these methods from iFileReader and put them in just Dura Scraper and call them abstract. And I'm going to say that the directory scraper class itself is abstract since it cannot be instantiated as is. But of course, we don't need a file reader since we are, in a sense, the file reader when those abstract methods are actually implemented. So let me go and remove the file reader. And in this case, we just want to call this because we have that as part of our implementation. So now the file reader extends directory scraper and implements those missing methods. And down here, all we need to do is instantiate file reader as opposed to directory scraper. And then we just give it our directory path and we can get rid of file reader because we are a file reader. And let's see how we're doing. There you go. But again, we get that really nice loose coupling between the logic of the directory scraper and the implementation around whether a file is a JSON file or not, or how to parse the files that it gets. So you could have multiple versions of a directory scraper that scrape the directory in different ways. All right, let's go try out the functional version of this. I'm going to copy this one and create dir scraper functions. And I'm going to keep around file reader in this case. And we're going to create a new thing called create directory scraper. And it's going to just take a file reader and it's going to be a functor. It's actually going to return a function. And that function is going to be the directory scraper. So we re return a function, which takes a directory path 
we'll call it dir path, just be easy. And it in turn then does that FS, read dir sync, and all of that. So now we need to actually instantiate one of these things. So I'm going to create a new value called dir scraper. And then use that create directory scraper with file reader. And now that dir scraper just takes the directory because it already has the file reader, which we gave it when we created it. All right, let's give it a try. <laughs> Not bad, pretty cool, okay. So again, we've abstracted away the implementation of the directory scraping or the directory iteration from the mechanics of how we wanna actually parse the files we found when we did that directory scraping. And that's a really good way to loosen the coupling between these two things. All right, well, I hope that helps you understand these three design patterns, the abstract factory pattern, the builder pattern, and the factory method pattern, and how you can use those to disentangle the logic that decides whether you want to create an object from the code that actually goes and creates the object. Of course, I'd love to hear from you and your ideas about these patterns or this series in the comment section down below. Feel free to grab No BS TS the book on sale right now. The link is in the description down below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder, no BSTS series two video comes out. So exciting. <laughs> Not a bad start. All right, onward and upward.